I was born and raised in Montana. Lived here my whole life. We did move down to southern Utah for two years in high school, but other than that, I've lived in Montana. But Montana's my home. So I'm a fourth generation sage grouse hunter. And my grandfather started hunting with his father in 1909. So when my grandfather started hunting him, he was kind of the bird dog. He did take a wagon and horses and then go about three day ride down from where they lived and go hunt sage grouse. And I, I've thought about it a lot and I don't think that's just strictly for food. Um, I think there had to be some kind of enjoyment that they just, you know, they love to go after after birds and they'd take the the horses and the wagon, they'd go through and the birds would get up and they'd hunt them that way. And my granddad would uh, get out of the wagon and go get them and bring them back and they'd have um, a bucking a bucking board on the wagon there and they'd go tie them up to that bucking board so all the sage grouse would be laid out there, kind of I guess like our modern day tailgate. Last year was a hard year for me. That was the first year. I didn't have my dad. And even though he, he hadn't been able to hunt with me for a few years, I'd still, on the way home, I'd, I'd call him up and tell him what happened. And uh, before he died, he says, what's the one thing of mine you want? And I said, your shotgun. And carrying it out here, you know, you know it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't have him there with me, but it just brings back memories of him growing up, watching him carry that gun with him, having it there and just walking in certain areas, have it in my hand and just remember those times that we had together. And so that gun means the world to me. Yeah, I remember my first stage grouse. It kind of became a blur at that point. I just was walking towards that dog and all of a sudden the sage grouse gets up, I shoot and it comes down. And a few more come up and I shoot one more and uh, it comes, it goes down. And I remember like, oh man, I just, I just killed my first bird. And the dogs go over there and get it and bring it back to me. And my dad, my dad was uh, just standing off to the side and uh, smiling and he was excited. I couldn't understand why. Like, I was excited, I just shot the bird, but he was excited. He had a smile on his face, and he just had a, a little Olympus camper, camera that he had always carried with him, and he pulls it out and says, come on, let's get some pictures. And he got pictures of me, and he puts the camera away, and he comes over and uh, shakes my hand. and says, good job, you did good on those. And he put them in the back of my vest. And I think about that, and I was like, why did he just throw them over the fence? Because we're right by the truck. Well, why did he make me carry 14 pounds of birds the next five miles that we walked? And I think he wanted me to have the experience. This is what you do. You, you shoot a big old bird, you carry it with you. And, you know, he put it in my vest. I carried those two birds, and I was dead tired by the time I got back to the truck. And... Uh, and, but I was happy, I got those birds, and my dad was happy, and the dogs were there, and they were Britneys. You know, the one that was pointing the bird, he was as old as I was, a 12-year-old Brittany. 
named Coke, and he was a good dog. And we got we saw more birds the rest of the day. We got more, and I don't remember if if I shot any more, but I just remember those two birds. And uh, I remember my dad's smile. I literally have things that my great grandfather learned about sage grouse in the 1800s have been taught to me that I'm still doing today. And what those things are, I don't know. My dad's taught me. His dad taught him, and my great granddad taught him. We, coming out here and just being able to use those things and what I've, my dad taught me and what I've learned and what I'll be able to teach my kids it means the world to me. This is this land's very checkerboarded up. You know this little section here will be private and it's not labeled and you won't know there's no way to know other than if you have a map and with Onyx maps having a GPS right in your hand or your phone or whatever you use to be able to figure out exactly where you are and exactly where you can go, it's vital for hunting out here. Because I haven't been, I haven't ever hunted up here. And so uh, I sat on the computer checking areas out and then uh, on my phone too when I was at places and found some good areas, found some roads we can go down that had good access and you can tell that some of these areas were sitting, had a, sagebrush in it and so you just kind of either mentally note it or drop a weight uh, mm -hmm. waypoint and on the drive up here I just kind of started taking some of those roads that I'd looked at and it's done good I spent I would spend anywhere from, I started keeping track, it was between 235 and 300 days a year in the field. I was always out in the field. And then I, I uh, messed up my back really bad, and it still affects me today, but I couldn't go anywhere. I just, I, I laid in bed for months at a time, and it killed me, absolutely killed me. Like, literally, I wanted to die. I hated not being able to be out here, and I knew my dogs were sitting out in the kennel waiting for me and I hated it because I wanted my my dogs to be out there with them and be out here and I couldn't and I took all my strength just to be able to move around the house for months at a time my wife she we had we had her kids and she was probably seven months pregnant and she went and loaded up my dogs and took me out to this place and we just went for a walk and I it hurt so bad. Like I was in so much pain, but I was so happy to be out there. I was, I didn't make it back to the truck hardly. I barely made it back. And here she is seven months pregnant. And she, I'm trying to get to the truck and I'm looking back here and she's loading my dogs in the back of the truck, taking their collars off them and give them the loves that I give them and the pets I give them out and tell them they did good. And she loads them in there and she doesn't know what she did for me.
she pushed me to get back out here, even when it wasn't easy for her. But she knew how much it meant to me. My name is Brandon Moss. I'm from Billings, Montana, and I'm a fourth generation sage grouse hunter.